Okay, so I'm going to explain the key concepts for fields. I'm going to keep trying to keep it general and not talk about specific fields too much, but I'll explain how it, these apply to both gravitational and electric because of the, those are the two ones you need to compare using these properties. So let's first have a look at the symbols for them. So field strength is given the symbol E. Force is given the symbol F, you'll have seen before. Potential is given the symbol V, which should not be a surprise having done circuitry and know about potential difference being measured in volts. And potential energy is given the symbol E with a subscript P, and you need that to make sure it doesn't get confused with field strength. So what are these properties? Well, field strength is exactly what it says on the tin. It tells you the strength of a field created around uh, an object. So if it's an object with mass, that which has a gravitational field around it, it's a measure of the strength of that gravitational field. So let's just scribble it down. So first of all, what are the units of field strength? Well, it depends what kind of field it is. So if it's a gravitational field, the unit of field strength is newtons per kilogram. If it, ooh, so that's if it's a gravitational field, or if it's an electric field, the units are will be in newtons per coulomb of charge. So let's have a look at how you'd actually calculate the force of an object moving into that field. So you, you let's say you've got an object of mass m, and we want to work out the force it experiences from. Uh, an object with a field strength of E. So to calculate the force, all you do is take the field strength and multiply it by the mass of the object entering the field and that will tell you the force experienced on it and obviously that's measured in newtons. Or if it's an electric field to get the force, you take the field strength obviously in newtons per coulomb this time and multiply it by the charge that has entered the field, which I'm just going to call Q in this case. Those two are nice and simple. Let's talk about ones which are slightly more complicated. So, once you have an object with a field in it, one of the things we want to be able to measure in that field is something called potential. And you want to be able to know what the potential is at any given point in the field. Now let's just quickly define what potential is. Now potential is the energy, so it's the energy um, to uh, to move a unit mass or mass or for an electric field unit charge and just before I continue I'll explain what that means a unit mass is one kilogram that's the unit mass and the unit charge is one coulomb so it's the energy it's taken to move one kilogram, or the energy taken to move one coulomb, from infinity, so I'll use the symbol like this for infinity, just because I'm running out of space. So it's the energy moved from infinity to the specified point. So if you want to work out what the potential is at this specified point, it's the energy taken to move a unit mass or unit charge from infinity to that point. And in the case of gravitational fields, you things want to go from infinity to those points. So you can actually get energy out, which is why it's given a minus sign potential for gravity. But I'll talk about a bit more about that in my video about gravitational. So the last little bit, calculating potential energy. So obviously you might have things which are not a unit mass or not a unit charge moving into fields. And you want to be able to work out what their potential energy is. So to get potential energy, you take the potential and you just multiply it by the mass. And obviously that it's an energy, so it has units of joules. Potential has units in volts, just like in electric circuitry, exactly the same measured in volts. Now when we learn about fields, there are two key types of fields that you need to know about. There's radial and there's uniform. 
and there's a couple of very key differences. Now, a radial field is when you have a point mass or a point charge right here in the middle. I've tried to mark it with a red blob, it's not exactly in the middle, but it should be. And so you can see the field lines going all the way around it, in, and so coming out in all directions. A uniform field is different, and it, its lines will be parallel to each other, and I'll explain the key differences. So with a uniform field, the electric field strength is the, or the gravitational, if it was a uniform gravitational field, is, is the same throughout. So the, the field strength does not change anywhere in the field, it's just, if you measured it anywhere, it will be the same. In a radial field, that's not the case. And what you find is that the field strength, if we do a quick sketch of the field strength as the distance away from the charge increases, what you find is it has this sort of shape, what's called an inverse square. And so whereas a uniform, the field strength is the same throughout, in a radial field, you'll find the field strength decays in an inverse square rate with the distance away from that charge. And that's quite important to know. Now, with the radial charge, you see these lines drawn here, and in the uniform ones, you see them drawn here clear. These are called equipotential lines. I'll scribble that down just to indicate. So that's called an equipotential potential line. And what that means is that the potential on this line, anything on any point on this line has the same potential or they have equal potential. So these lines are marking places that have the same potential for this field. And it's the same with the uniform field. All the points on those lines have the same potential. It's important not to get those mixed up with field lines which I'll talk about in the next slide. So field lines are a bit different to the equipotential lines. So field lines actually always go perpendicular to the equipotential lines. So a field line would be going like this, or the field lines can be going the opposite direction. So, and then on this one on the right hand side, you could have field lines like that, or you could have field lines like that. And like I say, they're always perpendicular to the equipotential lines. So what dictates whether they point outwards or they point in? So this is determined about whether the force from the field is attracted in the radial field is attractive or repulsive. So some th say gravity is an attractive force. So the field the field lines here point towards the center because it's attracting them electrostatic force can be repulsive if you have two of the same charges, in which case the line would point out. Likewise, on the right-hand side with the uniform field, it um, obviously the field always points towards the mass. So say you had, I don't know, say this was actually the surface of a planet. Obviously, it wouldn't be exactly flat, but you could model it as being flat. Obviously, the field line would point towards the planet. Whereas if this was an electric field, the rule is that field lines go from positive to negative. So this one here is the correct one, and that one there is not the correct one for an electric field because it goes from positive to negative. And when I look at the two different types of fields, I'll explain the sign conventions to do with those. So the last thing I'll talk about is actually where you find these types of fields. Now, you might already have... Um, seen or read about an application. So with with uniform fields, one of the places you'll find them is capacitors. And so, but these are something that uses electric charges in the, between parallel plates. So they have this uniform field between them. Whereas something like um, obviously gravity around. Uh, an object, for instance, you obviously think about um, this kind of field. So if you want to look at a planet, if you're looking at this, how it impacts other planets, you think about it as a radial field. 
Whereas, slight, I guess a slight deviation from that is that on planet Earth, we are very, very close to the planet. So we actually model it as a uniform field when we're doing our you know, weight equals mg calculations. We assume that g is pretty constant throughout the distances we're applying that on planet Earth. And that's an important assumption we are making when we do that.